Today I am printing a letterpress plate, which looks kind of like this. It's a flat plate that's got a raised surface that you can then run through a letterpress, uh, roll it through, you ink the top, you ink the top, and uh, and it'll press this whatever you have here onto the onto a piece of paper, whatever it is that you're printing onto. This is something that is actually pretty expensive if you ordered it from a service bureau uh, that specializes in photopolymer plates. Uh, they often have minimum order sizes of $60 or so uh, for these, uh, whereas one of these guys here is actually very little resin. Uh, one of these guys here is probably about, um, you know, uh, 25, 50 cents worth of resin, even if you used expensive stuff. It is, however, a bit tricky because there's this huge flat surface. And because you are letter pressing this top is actually the inked surface that's going to go onto the surface, you don't really want to print it at an angle or anything because this thing is just not going to be stiff enough. This is something that's been cured and sat around for uh, weeks, one of my early attempts. And, um, and it's printed out of some pretty flexible material and this stuff is not is uh is just not going to hold together it's not going to give you the surface you need and the accuracy you need if printed at an angle and so i'm going to print it flat now a couple of tricks printing flat you'll notice when i look at the back of this letterpress plate it is totally smooth and that might be a curiosity because the stock build plate from Kudo 3D has a nut here um, that's going to impact the flatness of the backside and might make an impression that'll show through when you put it under pressure and push it through. Um, and so the mystery is not so mysterious. I am using in this case a custom made build plate. This is the build plate designed by T. Dixon 1000, um, and he posted some very nice 2D diagrams, uh, machining instructions. I converted it into 3D and uh, printed it out on a CNC milling machine uh, because my manual milling skills are pretty poor. I attempted to make one of these build plates to his spec on a manually milling machine, but I am ashamed to say that my manually, manual milling skills are really, really terrible. Um, and so I got, the, I got a whole bunch of deflection, which created these extra marks here. And this was done with a fly cutter. So that was kind of pretty scary to have this thin thing deflecting all over the place. My measurements were all off when I was um, when I was um, uh, adjusting the angle on this thing, and so uh, this thing just did not come out well. It is usable, um, although it does have the sandblasted surface, which is a bit too rough. It's very difficult to get parts off the build plate. It's easy to scrape up parts of the build plate itself accidentally when scraping off. So I'm not using uh, this, the one that I, I milled by hand. Instead, I'm using the one that I, I CNC milled. So, well, I took this off, so I'm gonna have to get the angle back. So let me take this back down to zero. There we go. Push down the side a bit. And then tighten this guy back up. And then I'll need to fill the resin tank. What I'm using today is Fun To Do Standard Blend. The Standard Blend 
has the characteristics that are good for letterpress, uh, particularly that it is soft. Real letterpress plates are sure D around 70 or so, which you would think is about the, um, the hardness of the industrial blend. But I printed some letterpress plates previously, and I'll show you at the end the difference and kind of why I'm doing it in a, doing another run. But I printed a bunch of letterpress plates previously on different materials, and the softer material is better. Um, the r ultra soft, the uh, the standard blend is a uh, shorty of 35. It is easier, it produces a better result. Um, now you need to be careful because yes, because it's shorty 35 and because it's flexible, it seems like it's pretty tough, but hey look, it's still photopolymer resin, which means it is brittle. It can't handle this kind of the deformation that one would expect from a thermoplastic. If I had a thermoplastic um, a sheet of um, uh, polyethylene or something that was thin enough to do this on, I wouldn't quite have this behavior where essentially I, I can just tear this apart. So you do have to be careful. This thing is not as not as tough as you might think from its flexibility, but we are fortunately not in our usage exposing the um, the letterpress plate to that type of for those types of forces. And so this is the fun to do standard blend. I've got a. Uh, my own pigmentation in there. So I put just enough red to make it really bright red and uh, I have, I do have some glass flock mixed into this as an experiment. I don't think the glass flock makes any difference to the um, to the performance of the resin for this purpose. Uh, I just don't happen to have any uh, standard blend that doesn't have glass flock mixed in. Um, glass flock is somewhat abrasive on stuff. So I don't want to get it all around, but it prints fine. It doesn't scratch up my Teflon. It doesn't do anything crazy like that. It is, it's easily printable. So I've got that in here now. Let me go to Z Home. That looks pretty good. I just gotta get some bubbles out of the bottom. Bubbles have been chased away. So this is a relatively easy print. It's only two millimeters tall. So this should go relatively quickly. So let's time lapse this, and then I'll show you what I got on the on the output side. For the last two layers, let's come in real time as so you can get an idea of what the lift heights look like.
the base areas that were fully solid needed about 10 millimeters of lift and then now I'm on only lettering uh, and that's about uh, 5 millimeters of lift was suffi is sufficient. I am lifting slowly Lifting at, I lifted at uh, 15 millimeters per minute for the solid layers and then 25 millimeters per minute for the lettering areas. So we'll take this up now. Let me begin scraping some of this excess resin off. The build plate is sloped so it doesn't collect that much resin, but it still collects some. Pretty good. Of course, the print is inverted. So I've actually printed two parts in one here. I've got the press plate and I've also got a frame. And the frame is designed to help align the roller so that when you roll ink onto the press plate, you will only get ink on the lettered parts and not on the background parts like over here. And so this frame is taller than, is thicker than the base layer, but shorter than the lettering. And then there's this very thin film layer around the edge that is designed to be cut by a knife. We'll see if that works out. I might not have left enough space. It's hard to see here whether that's the case or not. I'll have to clean this off. So you also do need to be a bit careful during the finishing process to make sure that when you finish this the object does not warp on as you uh, as you finish it so I like to leave it on the build plate for as long as possible so let me go and clean this thing off and then we can see how it looks and so here's the finished press plate it's uh, it's inverted and it's got the frame probably can't see easily from the cross section here the frame is slightly shorter than the type um, and then it should be possible there's a there's a tiny half millimeter seam between the between the uh, the bottom of the plate and the frame here and so along that tiny seam it should be relatively easy to run a knife or in some of the thin parts simply um, bend it and have that have separate the frame from the underlying plate. And so there it is. Letterpress plate with fun to do standard blend on the Kudo 3D Titan 1.